And after that was done, he was able to say, oh, this is a good Bible. This is a good book. I've tasted and I've seen. It's good. Well, that is no Christianity at all, right? Only a true Christian is able to taste all the Word of God exactly as God has served it up. Only a true Christian can taste all of it and still say, it's all so, so good. That doesn't mean we rest, don't wrestle with it. It doesn't mean we are struggle with some of the hard texts and go, God, I don't understand. This seems so hard. And, but you still, as a true Christian, are going to say, this is good. This is the Word of God. So, again, what we're talking about here in Hebrews 6, it doesn't seem to be that it is a believer. The final one is taster of the powers of the age to come. So Jesus Christ, of course, brought in the new age, right? The new kingdom. He brought in the beginning of the end. At his arrival, the kingdom of God that will go on and on for all eternity was beginning to come to fruition. And he says to the religious leaders and to the Jews, all these people are seeing this happen. He says, if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, which he did right there in their, in their midst, if that's happening by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Also, when the Jews gathered around thousands of them and they were, their little bellies were hungry and, and, he, and Jesus took the little loaves of bread and the little fishes and he multiplies these and he feeds every single mouth, every single belly of these thousands and thousands of Jews. Those Jews literally tasted of the powers of the age to come. But most of those Jews did not believe in Jesus, did not follow him. They were not truly saved individuals. So anyone, anyone can witness the power of God, but only a true Christian will continue to follow the God of this power. And so that's the rub. That's what's the point of this entire passage and where it goes with its application, as we'll see in a minute. But the question is, who among us will be the ones who continue to follow Jesus Christ to the very end, to the very moment you breathe your last on this planet, from the moment you put your head down to die and go into the afterlife? Which one of us, who among us, will be those who do not ultimately continually fall away, but are those who continue on in full faith, regardless of how hard it might get? So we want to look at verse 6 now because this is where it really heats up and it really, um, we struggle with the, the verses here. But it says it's impossible for apostates to be restored to repentance. Well, why? What are the details of this text? And I hope you've got your Bible hopefully out in front of you if you can, or maybe it's up on the screen. What are the details? Why is it impossible for apostates to be restored to repentance? Well, two reasons. And they're really despicable and terrible reasons, disgusting reasons. And I myself have participated in college, like I said earlier, in these things. It's terrible. Number one, they crucify the Son of God again. Number two, they hold the Son of God up to contempt. Now think about this. When you've got a, someone who professes faith, when they see, and anyone here who professes faith, you know when you see the cross, when you think of Christ hanging on the cross, your response is one of absolute gratitude. Your response is one of falling on your knees, thankful to God that Jesus would do this for the likes of sinners like you and I. Your response is to lift him up, glorify him as the ultimate great high priest, the one and only son of God who holds all things in his hands, the one and only son of God who is the creator of all things. You exalt him. But an apostate goes from that posture and then does a 180, where now they say, I no longer believe that this Son of God is indeed the Son of God, the deity. I no longer believe him to be God. And therefore, the apostate now, instead of the one who fall before him and bow and submission to him on the cross, the apostate now essentially adds his or her name to the list of Pharisees and Jews and Romans 
who want to crucify Jesus, who want to hold him up to contempt, who want to run his name down on the ground, who want to destroy him because they don't think he is the son of God. He's just a pathetic imposter. That's what an apostate is now saying. So it's a dramatic and despicable 180 from glorifying to delightedly crucifying the son of the living God. 